up Shredders? My name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for Alan Soon as part of a custom monthly music review. And if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on the screen from an act named Hu Shu titled No Fear In My Heart. Now for a bit of background, I've been informed by Alan that the pilgrimage is an important religious and cultural activity in China especially in the Tibetan region. The Tibetan region is mainly influenced by Buddhism and then Tibetan Buddhism. People will kneel and then stretch their bodies until their faces touch the ground as a sign of devotion and humility. Often a once in a lifetime pilgrimage, these people will kneel all the way from their homes to the sacred mountain, spanning hundreds of kilometers along the way. Elderly people and children have lost their lives on this arduous journey, but they continue to defend their spirit and faith. So that's just before we go into it, so we're going to listen to this track from start to finish. We're going to hear what we think. Let's go! 你在躲避什么? Who sure love their kind of sleepy sounding music, don't they? So Very used to dynamic range there. Oh. You know they weren't kidding, they go the whole way. I'm getting distracted by the video. I know I need to focus on the music, but you know. The double tracking with the guitars, bass, and vocals is dope. Are they clapping? Is the clapping a sub layer? Because if so, that's really dope. Like, that's really cool. It's um like the sound of them clasping their hands together as they, as they pray. Nice to have some English bits. Thank you, Pushu. And for it to come back down to this place where it's kind of a little more sort of like lo-fi, a warm and sort of cassette tape is kind of dope. The freshness of the production quality of the guitarist, bass and drums we had before with the vocals is charming. It's really well produced. This is an awesome song, dude. I 
And it's just really charming. Like it's really charming with the way the vocals are being sung and the bluesy intonations in the second half of the chorus riff. It's just really pleasurable to listen to, despite the gravity of what's going on in the music video. A little bit of ab-loving. Great drum fill. It's just gorgeous where there's really subtle hmm. Just before you move on, I know I'm pausing it, but to be fair, it's I've got to kind of pause it occasionally for fair use purposes, right? The guitar solo is tremendously well done there. It's not overplaying. It's trying to sort of sit there with the rest of the composition and arrangement. It's a part of the performance, the tapestry there, in a way that makes it almost seem like the guitar solo is part of the journey throughout this track, much like what they're talking about within the song. And to just effortlessly go back into the chorus like that is a masterstroke. <laughs> They have to cross that? That was wild, dude. What? What a phenomenal journey they go on. Let's let's have a look at the lyrics. So we've got lyrics here kindly provided to translation from Alan, so thank you for that. What are you hiding from? What are you trying to hold on to? And who are you trying to please? You once knelt down, but this indifferent world has never been kind to you. So you detest danger or plunge into the abyss of misfortune. You cautiously believe you possess it as if life is is complete. You've also asked questions before and then fell into silence. Oh, because without a grassland you forgot you're a horse. Can you completely let go of your hand? Do you dare to fall so recklessly and without regrets? Let me experience a profound heartache. Take it all away, leave me empty handed once more. Only when I'm on the brink of death, the true me can be born. That's who I am, that's who I am. The one who smiles, the one who can fly. Just let time go. Oh, I get it. With no fear in my heart, God comes to mind. I, I, you're kneeling now, stand with no fear in my heart, God comes into my mind. I think I get it. Let's talk about that more in the conclusion. So what I've just realized is that if I try and say words fully, they're probably going to be clearer for people to understand. So I'm going to try and speak with better pronunciation and clarity in this review, and hopefully that sounds good. I'll probably forget it for the next review I do, but let's just see how, how long we can keep the streak going, shall we? Welcome to my review of this track from an act named Pushu titled No Fear In My Heart. 
Now, what do I think this track is about? I think that this track is about someone who is looking at another, maybe someone who initially came from a humble background only to maybe fall onto something else. They Maybe they had lost their faith, maybe they had become a different person, and they're reminding them of where they have fallen, that fear that they have, you know, like, can they let go of who they are? and find go back to their roots and find some sort of faith and then they're talking i think they're talking about themselves the vocalist and talking about their own belief in god and how it keeps them humble and how it gives them the will to go on and they have that sort of light about them and that smile and they know that everything is going to be okay i'm thinking that maybe it's about people who maybe became agnostic or atheist and lost their sense of spirituality and their their own sort of meaning of life you know the raison d'etre and they're comparing that to someone who is potentially spiritual or religious and they are I, I i'm not totally sure about that i think i might have been misinterpreting it but i think at the crux of it is that this person is realizing that they have no fear in their heart because of their belief their strong conviction that things are going to be okay that they'll make it through it i think that's basically what they're trying to get at here with the story and i think that it's very well told the vocalist sings very well. I think there were more than one singer. There were multiple vocal tracks in there. They may have been the same or different singers, but either way, they emoted and performed tremendously within this piece. They had a great presence within their range, great control of their head and chest voice. It was very much a kind of indie rock performance where we basically uh, we we sat there and we tried to um we we try it was like a live live take. It was like you were listening to them live. I appreciated the quality and the clarity of both the recording and the performance there. The repetition of the melodies and harmonies in the chorus sections as well as the slight little bits of variety within the rhythmic phrasing and the melodies in the interlude and verse sections were great. And that there was sufficient variety even throughout a track at 6 minutes 33 to keep me engaged throughout even if I didn't necessarily understand the lyrics. I think that they emoted in a friendly, kind and charming way that is a nice coupling with what the story was about as well as what the video was about i think that this track is very special and it is enhanced via the audio visual experience through the music video i would still say that the track alone would be very interesting to listen to but i should note that just for transparency purposes that the video i think enhances it further it's a very good video the track at 6 minutes 33 is filled with verses and choruses and instrumental sections and a solo section later on, a drums and then going into a guitar section there. And I think that that is enough. It's a not necessarily through composed. Uh, it might be through composed actually. It, it, either way, it is a wonderful use of time. We explored uh, relatively accessible guitar riffs. I think the strumming that we had, some of the picking ideas were great as well there. The last thing we need is harsh sounding guitars in a track like this, which is meant to sort of, I suppose, sound kind and forgiving, at least where the tone of the vocals is concerned. I think the bass playing in the low end was fantastically phrased there, very respectful and stuck to the root notes without too much moving away from that, but I think that just made the track sound fuller. The drums were wonderful. We we basically pocketed for most of it, relying on cymbal grooves with kicks and snares, etc., rotating between some of the hi-hat and ride parts. We did have a really cool drum solo later on, though, that explored the entirety of the kit, but basically this is more of a song where it's about, again, the journey, so trying to sort of take the listener out of the experience by putting them in a space where they were like, oh, suddenly guitar solo, oh, back to the track, I think would have been just a little bit too disruptive for what this track wanted to be and what it needed. The guitar solo as well, while I remember, was really eloquent and wonderfully phrased. It was incredibly expressive. It stuck within the mid-range with its phrase melodic sort of major, not melodic minor, but its, its melodies, its major and minor phrasings there. We had some interesting bluesy chord progressions as well, like in some of the, like in the second half of the chorus that really kind of mellowed the track out. And if I talk about the theme, it just kind of sounded like you were gently guiding someone on there, like you were pushing them forward, but in a way where it's like, come on, you can do this. And I kind of adore that with the overall brightness of the mix and the way the instruments are played, the use of open chords, the lack of really sort of sharp or uncomfortable intervals, you know, chord chords or anything like that. It was just very friendly. 
And ultimately, I just think the theme supported the story very well, as well as the vocal style. Everything was nice and tight knit. The performance was great, fantastic chemistry between the band members, and there wasn't a note out of place. Finally, the studio recording, mixing and mastering was exemplary. I'm really happy with how things were phrased there. I, I firmly believe that this is commercial grade in regards to how it was produced. It was nice to have the more sort of lo-fi aesthetic at the start, like it was being played through like a vinyl or a cassette tape there for the full brightness. I've said brightness quite a lot in this review, but for the full clarity of the kit, the entire band to come in in the chorus sections was a great foil. Very easy thing to do there to have the ABAB sound different sort of tonally and production wise as in addition to the way things were played. The vocals, you know, whether they were alone or double tracked had a great synth clarity to them. That was just, it was a fantastic recording that was uh, captured really well. And it didn't try to over process or clean them. I think they were just great as they were. They didn't need any adjustment, aside from a bit of filtering and EQing, which was done simply just to niche it in the frequency spectrum with the guitars, the bass, the drums, and everything else. It was nice and wide in the stereo field overall, lots of instruments surrounding you. There was sufficient dynamic range within this track. Things were not the same loudness all the time. Things came down and went up. And when they needed to be consistent, they were in a way that made sense. And finally, it was nice and loud without pumping, so the bus compression and limiting were handled. And I mean, effectively, this is my review of this track from an act named Pushu, titled No Fear In My Heart, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show them some love via the various social medias and the YouTube page, and stay cool, and stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, and I will catch you in the next SP Patrons video. Spider Hands out. <laughs>